All right. So, uh, so here's our first example of a, a real simple, uh, real simple timing issue. Uh, I've got um, Frank here with me. Hello. And we're going to go through uh, what we have. We have uh, two simple um, small base ships with standard firing arcs, no uh, no special pilot abilities, no modification of dice, no no tokens. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're just going to go through this in sequence and, and uh, resolve uh, an attack using this timing chart with uh, very basic stuff. So, Frank, why don't you start, start us through the chart here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, since we have two different pilot skills, we're going to start by firing the highest pilot skill and then going to the lowest. Uh, here we have Marek Steel at a 7 and the Blue Squadron Novice at a 2. Uh, we are going to first declare the target step. So, he only has one target. He is going to measure range to the enemy ship, uh, which will be range 2. Uh, and you can clearly see he is in arc. Uh, that is the second part of it. We will pay the cost to perform the attack, which there is no cost for this attack. So that's going to be a no. It's very simple. Uh, we are going to go to now the roll the attack dice step. So we will identify the number of attack dice. That is the red number on the card, also on the token in the base. Uh, and then we will roll these three because there are no modifiers. It is range two. And we have two potential hits. Now, you'll notice I said potential hits because they aren't hits until they actually go through the final phase of the attack step. So, uh, we have no way to actually modify these dice because there's no tokens and no special abilities at this point. Uh, so, there's no modifying on the defender's side either because, again, we have no uh, special abilities. So then we go to the roll defense dice step, identifying the number of defense dice for this blue squadron novice, which is two, and we will roll those. And <laughs> that's about right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, so no, no, no. <laughs> that's an eyeball. Okay, so uh, we now try to modify these dice. We have no tokens to modify with. We have no abilities to modify. Uh, we will go to the... Def, uh, the, the, the attacker the, can't modify the them either. The attacker can't modify them either because he has no abilities to do so. So we will compare the results. Uh, since the eyeball can't be changed at this point um, because there are no tokens, uh, we compare these. So the potential hit and the potential hit here are not cancelled by anything. Uh, so they become actual hits. Uh, we go to the next step which says did the attack hit? This is a yes because we have two potential hits that made it through the defense dice. Uh, we will then remove a shield token for every one of the actual hits. In this case it would be two. So the blue squadron novice will remove two of his shields. Um, if the blue squadron novice did not have shields we would then deal them damage cards, as it says in the deal damage step. But shields will absorb uh, any any damage prior to it going to hull. So um, at this point, <coughs> we go over here to the, is this the first attack from a secondary weapon? Well, there was no secondary weapon that attacks twice, so that is a no. Uh, abilities that trigger after attacking, we don't have any of those. We don't have any abilities that at all at this point. So we can pretty much ignore 8 and 9. Uh, are we resolving an ability from 9? Well that's again a no. Uh, we would then go to step 10 here, remove any destroyed ships. Well we still have uh, hull value for both of our ships so therefore uh, there is no removal of the destroyed ship. Uh, at this point we would go back to the All right, so now we're moving on to uh, the Blue Squadron Novice's attack, and we'll we'll switch roles. And now I'll uh, uh, I'll walk Frank through the uh, the timing chart for Blue Squadron Novice's attack on Merrick Steel. Uh, so step one, declare the target. He's going to measure his range to the enemy ship and check arc. 
He has range, he has arc. We're at range one. So he's going to choose the weapon for his attack at this point. His primary weapon is the attack. He's going to declare his target, which is Merrick Steel. So uh, he's going to pay the cost of the attack, which doesn't apply here. Uh, some secondary weapons, he'd have to pay the cost. And now the, the targeted ship becomes the defender. We're moving on to roll attack dice. He's going to identify the number of dice. Uh, it's four because of range one. Uh, resolve the abilities that increase or decrease. So it gives him four dice. And at this point, he will roll his attack dice. Good. All right, so he's rolled two hits and um, two eyeballs. And he moves on to the modify attack dice step. Uh, these abilities, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so Defend, defender, triggers defender, first. Defender, defender triggers first. So do I have anything that modifies his attack dice? I do not. Uh, now he has um, the ability to modify the dice. He's going to spend his focus and change those two eyeballs to hits. Uh, so now he has four potential hits. That's going to take me to the roll defense dice step. I'm going to identify the number of defense dice from the ship card. It's three. That gives me three green dice. And I don't have any abilities that would increase or decrease the number of dice rolled at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and roll those three dice. And he rolls two evades. And this evade token, we're going to move to the modify uh, defense dice step. The attacker um, does not have any abilities that modify my defense dice. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and use this evade token to modify my roll to add an evade result to it. So then we move on to compare results. We cancel the hits and evades. And so that takes away three of those potential hits, leaving us with one. No crits to, uh, to resolve. And then we determine whether or not the attack has hit. The attack did hit, so now we deal damage. We remove shield tokens to cancel hit results. We have one hit result, so Merrick Steel is going to lose one of his shield tokens, and no damage will be dealt. Uh, then we move on to uh, the whole first, second weapon, but we don't have any of those. So... Uh, we don't have a, a weapon that attacks twice. We don't have any uh, abilities that trigger after attacking or after defending. And uh, we don't have any, any of those abilities that result in an attack occurring. So uh, we're not resolving any abilities in step nine. And then we move on to step 10, remove destroyed ships. No one was uh, destroyed as a result of this exchange. So the turn, uh, these two attacks are complete. Okay, so we're going to mix things up a little bit, and, and this is our, our setup here is actually going to lead to a fairly complicated progression through the attack timing chart. So what we've got now, we've uh, increased our range between our two ships here, and Merrick has uh, changed his, his upgrades here. Uh, I've equipped an ion cannon secondary weapon upgrade and a TIE D title. Uh, our blue squadron novice over here still has auto thrusters, and we, we've left him shieldless uh, as a carryover. So. Um, that's going to make for a little bit messier progression through the chart, so let's let's take a look. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is Merrick Steele is going to fire first, being a 7. Uh, he is going to measure range to the potential target uh, and check for arc. So we see that he is in arc and at range 3. Uh, he will now choose the weapon he's going to fire, which is going to be the ion cannon, um, and then declare the target of the attack. So that will be the blue squadron novice. He would pay a cost if applicable, and there is none. Uh, now the Blue Squadron Novice becomes the defender. Uh, we will now go to the roll attack dice step, identify the number of dice. Since it's an ion cannon, you can see it's three attack dice printed on there. He has no abilities that would increase or decrease the number of those dice. Now he rolls them. Uh, at this point, the defender could modify the dice, but I have no abilities to do that. Um, now the attacker gets to modify, and as you can see, the attacker has no ability to do that either. Uh, we will then go to the roll defense dice step. So now we will identify the number of defense dice uh, that the ship gets to roll. As you can see, he gets two defense dice, um, and normally at range three he would get an additional one, but this is a secondary weapon, and secondary weapons do not allow for uh, range bonuses. Uh, so I will roll my two defense dice, 
the attacker would now be able to modify my dice, um, but of course he has no abilities to do that. Uh, at this point, range three, my auto thrusters will kick in. So now I can change. I may change one of these to an evade, and I will with the auto thrusters. We will now compare the uh, attacker's dice to the defender's dice, and the one uh, evade will cancel out the one attacker's dice hit. So, uh, as you can see, did the attack hit? No. Um, is this the first attack from a secondary weapon that uh, performs an attack twice? And that is also a no. Uh, now we'll go to eight. Uh, any after attacking abilities uh, or after defending abilities would occur. And then we'll get to nine, which is actually going to trigger this time. Abilities that are trigger uh, that occur after attacking and are an attack. And the tie D title actually allows you to have a second attack after you fire a secondary weapon using your primary weapon. So that is going to kick in in this step. Uh, are you re resolving any abilities from step nine? And we are at this point, which is the tidy title. So we will go back all the way to the top to the declare target step. So uh, he will again measure range. Range hasn't changed. It's going to be range three. And the also, also worth pointing out that at this point, uh, this ability that takes us back to the beginning of the uh, of declare of the chart and puts it at the declare target step. If there were another potential target, I could switch targets at this time. Yes. And also one other thing, the TID title allows you to fire a secondary cannon, not weapon. So your missiles would not work. Your cannon does. Right. Specifically the cannon. So we've determined it's range three and in arc. Um, we will choose the weapon. Well, we have to choose the primary at this point, which is a three die attack. Um, then the cost would be paid. There is no cost. We have the defender declared at this point, which is the target here. You will roll the attack dice. You have three. You are, have no abilities again to modify the amount. And he rolls three potential hits. Um, at this point, I could modify the dice. I do not have anything that I can do for that as a defender. The attacker would then modify, and uh, he already rolled three hits, so uh, we will go to the roll defense dice step. Now, I will identify the number of defense dice. At this range, since it's a primary, uh, we get one additional defense die um, because of range. So normally I would get two. At range three, I now get three dice. So. I will now be able to roll these dice. And blanks. That's awesome. So, we now go to the attacker being able to modify those. He does not. I have no ability to modify beyond the auto thrusters, which gives me one of the uh, evades at range three. So now we compare the defense dice to the attack dice. And you can see that only one of these gets canceled by my defense dice. So. Two potential hits have turned into two actual hits. We go down to, uh, did the attack hit? And now this is a yes. Now, in the deal damage step, you will see it's a little different this time because I do not have any shields. Um, I, would, I would have removed shield tokens, but at this point I don't have any. Um, now I am dealt face down damage cards for each one of the hit results. And as you can see, two hull, not enough to kill my ship, but very close at this point. Uh, we would then go to the next step. All the damage has been dealt. Um, first attack from a secondary weapon, no. Uh, any after attacking effects occur, no. Uh, are we resolving anything from stage nine, no. And remove any destroyed ships. Well, it's close, but nothing has been destroyed quite yet. And that is that. All right, so we're going to mix things up a little bit. We removed uh, Merrick Steel and our Blue Squadron novice from the board, and we're going to look at some uh, some uh, different effects with some ships that fire outside their primary firing arcs. So here we have uh, Cavill with an clipped uh, equipped blaster turret, and Dengar and a jump master with the punishing one title in R5PA. So let's go ahead through uh, our first attack in this uh, this situation. 
So, we have Dengar firing at pilot skill 9. Uh, we will uh, measure the range, which in this case is range 2. Uh, attacker will choose his weapon, which is going to be the primary weapon for the jump master, which is a turret. Uh, we will then declare the target of the attack, which is going to be Cavill, and pay the cost to perform the attack, which we do not have any costs at this point. So now, Cavill becomes a defender, uh, and we will go to the roll attack dice step. Now, a little different here, we're going to identify the number of attack dice uh, that Dengar is going to use. Now, usually you would get two dice for the primary attack. Um, however, we have a punishing one title which adds one to your primary weapon, so we will add a third die here, which we have not done in any of our other uh, previous uh, clips here. So, uh, at this point, we will uh, roll these three dice. Now, Defender will have a chance to modify these dice. Uh, defender cannot. Uh, the attacker will now have a chance to modify these dice. The attacker cannot. So, we have, at this point, two potential hits. We are at range two. Um, we do not have any abilities to add defense dice. Um, so, we go to the roll. Uh, there is no way to modify that one. Um, so, uh, I have no abilities to modify, and the defender has no abilities to modify. We will now compare the results. So, we have uh, three attacks or, that goes down to two. Hits will go through here as we compare. There's no way to actually cancel these dice out. So, did the attack hit? Yes. We will deal damage now. So, one shield will be removed from Cavill, and he will be dealt a damage card. He has no shields left. Uh, at this point, we go to the... Is this the first attack from a secondary weapon that attacks twice? It is not. Uh, we do not have any after-attacking uh, things that happen. We have no uh, extra attacks that trigger off of that, so we go down to the resolving uh, an ability on step 9, so we are not resolving any abilities at step 9. We go down to the removed destroyers, and at this point, Cavill is damaged, but not destroyed. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the second part of our, our exchange here. Cavill returning fire into Dengar. So, uh, we're going to first start with a declare target step. Cavill is going to measure his range to the potential target. He's at range 2 uh, outside of his primary arc. So then we're going to choose the weapon that Cavill is going to fire with. He opts to fire with his blaster turret, which is a 360 degree secondary weapon that fires at range 2. Uh, then going to declare Dengar as the target of that attack and pay the cost to fire my uh, blaster turret, which is one focus token. So I remove that focus token from Cavill, and Dengar has now become the defender. Moving on to the roll attack dice step, we're going to identify the number of dice. The primary we the uh, secondary weapon value here on this card is three. That's going to give me three red dice. We're then going to resolve abilities. Cavill's ability. Uh, his native pilot ability allows him to add one attack die to uh, any attack that uh, occurs outside of his primary firing arc. Now I'm going to roll these four dice. And he rolls up three hits and an eyeball. Uh, does the defender have any abilities that allow him to modify my attack die roll? It does not. So now I'm going to spend this target lock to re-roll this eyeball result into a hit. So that gives us four potential hits, moving on to the roll defense dice step. Uh, Dengar is going to determine how many dice he's rolling based on his uh, ship card, and it's two. He's going to resolve any abilities that might increase or decrease those, and has none. So he's going to roll those two dice, and he rolls an evade and an eyeball result. Uh, I am given the opportunity to modify those results and have no ability to do that. The defender's then going to modify that eyeball with his focus token. And that will move us on to the compare results step. So we have four potential hits and two evade uh, roll results. These will cancel out. So two hits 
uh, remain. So the question, did the attack hit? It did hit. So we move on to the deal damage step. Uh, remove shield tokens to cancel any hit results. We don't have any shields on Dengar. Um, remove shield tokens to cancel crit results. No, no shields again. Uh, and no crits. So the defender is then dealt face down damage cards for each of these hits uh, for two face down damage, car damage uh, cards on, on Dengar. Uh, then we're going to move to the question, is this the first attack from a secondary weapon that says performance attack twice? It is not. So we move down to step eight. This is where we have an ability that triggers after attacking that does not perform an attack. Dengar has R5P8 which uh, allows him once per round when you're defending to roll one attack die. On a hit result, the uh, attacker takes one damage. On a crit result, you and the attacker both take damage. So he will resolve that ability now. He rolls a blank. So no damage results from that. Uh, on to step nine. Do um, any abilities that occur after attacking, which result in an attack, uh, we don't have any. It, uh, Dengar is not in our... And the next question is, are we resolving an, uh, an ability in step nine? We are not. So we move on to re remove destroyed ships. No ships were destroyed in that exchange, so that concludes the attack. Okay, so we're gonna ramp up the complexity here just a little bit. And, and uh, we're, we're getting to, you know, one of, the, one of the primary reasons that this chart exists. We have a real complicated interaction now between Cavill and, uh, and Dengar that should, should illustrate uh, a couple things really well. So we're, we're moving on. We're just going to go straight to, to Cavill's attack again. You see, we've changed up the damage a little bit. So we've got a pretty severely damaged Dengar, uh, and we've got Cavill with a little bit of damage in the hull as well. So let's start over, assuming that we are, we're at uh, Cavill's turn to fire. So we're going to do uh, our declare target step. We're going to measure measure range to our potential target. We're still at range two. The attacker is going to choose his blaster turret as his weapon. Uh, he's then going to declare Dengar as the target of his attack and pay the cost to fire his blaster turret, which is his focus token. Uh, the target is now the defender on the chart. Uh, we're then going to move on to the retort roll attack die step, just like our last example. We start with three, then we resolve. Cavill's pilot ability, which adds an additional attack die to bring it to four. I'll roll those now. And in this case, I've rolled two, and the defender has the opportunity to modify. He has no abilities to do that. Now the attacker can modify, so I'll spend this target lock to re-roll these two. Hmm, okay. So that leaves us with two. That takes us to our roll defense die step. He's going to identify the number of dice from a ship card, which is two. He has no abilities that would increase or re, uh, reduce the, the, attack, the defense dice. He's going to roll those now. And he's rolled an evade result and a focus. So I have no abilities that would modify that. He has no tokens or abilities that would modify that. So then we go on to compare results. One cancels and one remains. So. Did the attack hit? It did. Deal damage. We have no shield, so we move on to three. The defender is dealt face down damage cards for the remaining hit results. Well, now, in our example here, there are enough face down damage cards to match the hull value of Dengar, but we're not to that point in the chart yet. So we don't resolve that. We simply deal the damage. So now we move on to the next question. Is this the first attack from a secondary weapon that says perform attack twice? This is a blaster turret, not TLT, so there's no second attack. However, now we're going to move on to eight abilities triggering uh, trigger that occur after attacking that don't perform an attack. He's going to trigger R5P8 and roll that single red die again. In this case, a, hit, a crit pops up, so I'm going to go ahead and deal one critical hit, to, regular. Uh, one regular hit to Cal, and a hit to Dengar as well. Again, we're not counting these up or doing anything with them just yet. We're just going through the, the timing chart. So we're on to step nine, abilities trigger that occur after attacking or defending that perform an attack. In this case, we're going to Dengar's pilot ability, uh, which reads, once per round after defending, if the attacker is inside your firing arc, which he is, you may perform 
uh, an attack against this ship. So our next uh, question is, are we resolving an ability in step nine? Yes. What's that do for us? It takes us all the way back to the beginning of the chart, starting with, uh, with Dengar, who now is in the declare target step. So he's going to measure range to enemy ships and check arc. He's at range two and in arc. He's going to choose his weapon, which is his primary weapon in this case. And he's going to then declare a target of attack, which is Cavill. He's going to pay any costs that would perform the attack. There are none. And now Cavill, in this case, is the defender. Uh, on to roll attack dice. He's going to identify the number of dice, which is two, uh, based on his card. He has uh, an ability here in the title that adds one die to that. So he'll be rolling three dice, and he'll roll those now. In this case, he rolls one crit and uh, an eyeball and a blank. So I have the opportunity to modify those, and I cannot. And he has no ability to modify those either, as has no tokens. So that's going to leave that one critical hit result uh, and move us on to roll defense dice. In this case, we're going to identify the number of dice, which is one. I have no abilities to modify those, so I'm going to roll that one at this time. And that's a blank. That moves us on to modify the dice. The attacker in this case has no way to modify the dice, and the defender has no way to modify the dice. So we move on to compare result. In this case, uh, the nothing cancels out, so uh, we move on to did the attack hit? In this case, it did hit, and we have no shield tokens. Move all the way to the bottom. The defender is dealt face up damage cards for the remaining critical hit results, and in this case. Cavill receives a stunned pilot result. It moves us on through the chart to, uh, is this the first attack from a secondary? It does not. Uh, do we have any abilities that occur after attack? We not perform an attack. Uh, we do not. And we have no abilities now that occur after attack or defense that would result in an attack. So the next question, are we resolving it in step nine? We are not. Then we move on to step 10, moving destroyed ships. Remove the attacker if that ship was kept in play due to simultaneous attack result um, and simultaneous attack movement. We don't have those issues. We don't have a simultaneous. We don't have a matching pilots. So in this case, Dengar was destroyed as a result of this attack as his use five, and he has more damage cards dealt than five, and that resolves that complicated attack and defense. Okay, so now we have um, what, what really might be one of the most complicated interactions in this chart. And, and really, you know, one of the reasons the chart exists. And if you, you're running through this and you haven't done it, I mean, this is our third attempt to get this recorded. So if you're, you're running through this, I really, really advise that you be familiar with all this uh, sequencing. Because if you, don't, uh, if you don't understand the sequence of all this, uh, of this uh, attack chart, this, this can be completely baffling. So let's go through this. What we have here... Uh, we're going to do this twice. We have our hired gun with uh, TLT, the BTLA-4, title and R4 Agramek. We have Dengar with R5P8 and Punishing 1 the way it was set up before. Uh, we've gone ahead and set him up at range 2. We'll get to that in a minute. But in this case, because it's important, uh, we're going to do this twice. Once we're going to go through the chart with the hired gun player having initiative, and then we'll go through it with Dengar having initiative because it changes things pretty significantly as it applies to the timing chart. So we'll go ahead and get started. So first things first, it's uh, our hired guns attack with the player having initiative. He's going to measure range uh, to the enemy ship. So he has range and arc at range two uh, for Dengar. He's gonna choose his weapon. In this case, he's gonna choose his primary weapon and he's going to declare Dengar the target of that attack. He has no cost to pay to make that attack and Dengar is now the defender. Uh, we're gonna move on to roll attack dice. Identify the number of attack dice. It's two for the uh, hired gun's primary weapon. He has no abilities to add to that, so he'll roll those dice now. Uh, comes up completely blank. So that first attack misses, uh, but we're not there yet. So he has two blanks. Uh, the defender has the opportunity to modify this result. 
has the uh, opportunity to modify this. Now in this case, he has missed completely, uh, but he has this focus token and he has R4 Agramech. So he's going to spend that focus token even though there's no eyeball result and R4 Agramech is going to give him a target lock, which he is going to use right now. Can he do that? Yes. So he's going to uh, take the target lock because he's still in the modify act die step. He's going to spend the target lock and he blanks again, which is fantastic. Okay, so uh, now we're on roll defense dice. Um, the uh, number of defense dice for the defender is uh, two. He has no abilities that increase that. He's going to roll those dice. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Uh, he's rolled in a bit. Uh, I have no ability to modify them. He has no ability to buy that result. We compare results. I have no hits. Uh, so um, we, uh, the attack did not hit. It's not the first attack from a secondary weapon that says perform that attack. Twice. However, abilities for trigger that occur after attacking that do not perform an attack. He's going to go ahead, that's going to trigger RP8. So he's going to roll one red die. And he's going to not get a hit or crit. And that's going to move us on to nine. Now, in this case, in our first instance, fired gun player has initiative. So uh, abilities that trigger after being or after defending that perform an attack, such as BTLA4, Dengar, uh, in this case, the uh, ability of player with initiative, because we have two abilities that trigger after an attack that result in an attack. So the gun player triggers first. So in this case, the BTLA4, because I have initiative, is going to trigger a TLT attack. So then it's on to the next step. Are you resolving an ability in step nine? We are. So we move right back to the target step, again, with our hired gun. Doesn't have to be the same target, but in this case, the only uh, target he has in range in his arc is, so he's measuring that, he's at range two. He chooses his uh, secondary weapon, so he can fire now based on that title. Uh, there is no cost to attack with E, um, and he's, uh, Dengar now becomes the defender in our in our attack here. Uh, we move on to roll attack dice. The attack value is three for TLT. Has no abilities that modify that uh, or increase or or decrease those. So he's going to roll those for his first TLT attack now, and that's going to leave him with two hits. Uh, the defender has no ability to modify that result, and I have no ability to modify that. So we fence dice. Uh, he's going to roll two defense dice with no ability to increase the number. Rolls one evade and one eyeball result. I have no ability to modify that. He could potentially modify that if he wants. He's going to spend his focus token to change that to an evade result. We move on to results and he has two evade results canceling out my two potential hits, hits on that first TLT attack. So, did the attack hit? It did not. Is this the first attack from a second to perform attack twice? It is. So now we back. We go back up to step two. Roll attack dice. Number of attack dice is three based on the attack value of the TLT. I have no ability to modify those, so I'm going to roll those three. And that's going to be a hit, a hit, and a crit result. A uh, defender cannot modify those, and I don't uh, modify those. So on to his defense dice, it's two. He has no ability that adds, adds dice to that, and he blanks. No uh, way to modify that, nor would I want to. He has no way to modify that, so it's on to compare results. In this case, we have uh, two hits and a crit uh, being canceled by nothing. So uh, all three, however, this is a TLT attack. So in this case, that results in uh, only one, one damage to... Um, to the target ship. He has no shield, so we move right on down to three, and he's dealt one face down. Back two, is this the first attack from a secondary weapon that says performance attack twice? Uh, it is not, it was attack. So on to abilities, there are no abilities here that trigger after attacking um, that don't result in an attack, but at step nine, we are going to move on to nine two, which says if you did not resolve an ability in resolve the ability of the other player. So this is all based on initiative, not pilot skill. 
So at this point, it would be Dengar's ability. So we are resolving an ability in step 9, which takes us all the way back to the beginning again. Dengar is going to change an arc. He has it, range 2, and has this ship an arc. He's going to choose his weapon. He chooses his primary. He's going to declare the attack, which is my hired gun. He's going to pay any cost. There are none. The target, uh, targeted ship is now the defender. Uh, now he's going to his dice. His primary value is 2. His title adds 1 to that. So he's going to modify that up. He's now going to roll those 3. And he rolls up 2 hits and an eyeball. Uh, I have no way to modify that as the defender, and the attacker has no way to modify that. We move on to rolling defense dice. The number is 1. Uh, based on ship value, I have nothing that modifies that. I roll the 1, and 1 of 8. Now we move on to, he can't, the attacker cannot modify that, and the defender can't modify that. So we move on to compare results. One of these cancel, and we're left with 1. Did the attack hit? It did. We have no shields in play, so one face down damage card goes, hit result. Now back up to, is this the first attack from? It is not. Uh, we have no abilities remaining that trigger um, trigger following after attacking and defending that don't result in an attack. We have no abilities remaining that uh, would trigger an attack. So the next question, ability in step 9, we are not. So now we move on finally to step 10, removing destroyed ships. Nobody was destroyed in that, but the attack is concluded. Alright, so real quick though, we're going to reset that. And now we're going to run through, uh, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Uh, we're going to run through it really quickly, assuming that the Dengar player has initiative. So, really, really quick. We'll do, do it really, really fast. So, it's the hired gun player's attack. We have a we had a focus token here. So, we're back to where we were. So, through the hired gun's declare target step, he's at range 2, he's in arc. He's going to choose his weapon. His weapon is his primary. He's going to declare Dengar the target of the attack. Of course, Dengar's now the defender. His attack dice are two. He has no abilities that modify that. He's going to roll the two dice. He has a hit and ult. He's going to modify. Um, the defender has the opportunity to modify. He does not. The attacker modifies that with his focus, giving him two hits. Our for Agramek, because he spent that in the attack, allows him to acquire a target lock on the target. This moves us on to defense dice step. Uh, defense dice is two. He has no abilities that add to that, so he rolls his two dice. The attacker can't modify. The defender by that with his focus token, giving him one. That moves us on to compare results. We have one and one. One cancels. And we have one remaining. Did the attack hit? It did. Fields. Uh, and there are no crits, so we deal one face down damage card for the one hit result. And is this the first attack from a secondary weapon? That, uh, it is not. Abilities uh, trigger after attack and defending. We have one, R5 P8, so he's going to roll that up. And he hits. So that face down damage card. Now, abilities that trigger after attacking that result in an attack. Because now the Dengar player has initiative. So his ability to feed mine, because we both have one. So now he's interrupted my attack with his attack. So we're resolving the ability in step 9 now for Dengar. So we're target. He measures range. He checks arc. He's got a uh, hired gun. He declares, uh, oh, choose your weapon. Chosen weapon is the primary. He declares the hired gun as the target of the attack. There are no costs. Under his roll attack dice, it's 2. Adds one for punishing one, and he's going to roll three. All right, modification in this case, two hits, and the defender gets first opportunity. I can't modify those. He has no no way remaining to modify them. So on to the defense roll. The defense uh, gun is one. I have no abilities that add to it, so I'm going to roll that one. And I have no way to modify that. So now we're on to, uh, also the, the attacker has no way to modify it. So on to compare result. I can't cancel either of those. So the attack did hit. Uh, there are no shields in play. Two hits result in two face down damage cards for our hired gun. Back to, is this the first attack from a secondary? It's not. Uh, we have no more abilities because he's already used R5P8, but he attacked in this, this case anyway. 
So now we're back to 9. We have uh, in 9-2, we did not resolve an ability in step 1. Resolve one ability of one other player. So now I can trigger BTL A and attack with TLT. So that takes us back again to step 1. We measure range. Chosen weapon is my secondary weapon. It's TLT. Fire the target of the attack. There are no costs to fire this weapon. Dengar is the defender. The number of attack dice is three. I have no ability to add to that, so I'm going to roll those three. And I've rolled uh, an eyeball. I have a target lock. I'm going to go ahead and spend that. To, well, first the defender. It's option. You can't modify that. I'm going to spend that to modify this result. And that leaves me crit. That's going to move us to roll defense dice. He has two. He has no way to modify it, so he's going to roll two. He rolls up. Uh, an eyeball and a blank. I have no, no way to block, modify it. So we have three hit hit crit to nothing. So that first TLT attack hit. But because of the text on the card, he has dealt only one. All right, is this the first attack from a secondary that says perform this attack twice? Yes, it is. So on the chart, we're back to roll dice, attack dice step. We check uh, the values three to modify it up. I roll three for one. I have no way to modify these results. The defender has no, well, sorry, don't get out of order. The defender can't modify them, I can't modify them. So we're left with one. On to defense dice. Two, put him up. He blanks. So I can't modify him and he can't modify him. Now we go on to compare. He has nothing to cancel with. So one goes. Did the attack hit? It did. We dealt the one damage. Is this the first attack from a second? It's not. That was the second. More abilities that trigger uh, that don't result in an attack. We have no more abilities that result uh, that trigger that result in an attack. So, are we resolving an ability in step nine? We are not. We're any. They were not. So finally, that absurdly complicated attack sequence is over. And all of that was simply the attack from the gun with TLT attacking Dengar. So pretty complicated stuff, but that's how it resolves. All right, so we're going to look at something a little different. Uh, we, uh, we've looked at Dengar and BTLA Force, uh, ships with abilities that uh, trigger during step eight and nine of the chart. Now we're going to look at a ship that has the opportunity to, mod as the defender, has the opportunity to modify the attacker's attack dice uh, in Sensor Jammer. We have Guri with Sensor Jammer and Auto Thrusters, and we also have Captain Oiken with Darth Vader and Gunner, and that'll let us go through uh, Darth Vader and Gunner during uh, the timing chart, because they uh, they trigger at different times, and we'll get to those. So first things first, uh, Oiken's going to declare target, so he's going to measure range. He's at range two, uh, he has a 360 arc, so he's going to choose his weapon, it's his primary. He's going to declare Guri as the target of attack, he has no cost associated with that attack, Guri is now the defender. On to the roll, roll attack dice, he has three, he has no ability that uh, adds to those three. So he's going to roll those three dice now. And now we move on to modification of those results. As the defender, I modify first with Sensor Jammer. I'm going to change one of these to an eyeball. The attacker now has the opportunity to modify that result. And he's going to spend his focus token to modify that back to a hit. That takes us on to the roll, roll defense dice step. Curry receives three dice. I have no ability that adds to those three dice, so I'll roll those three. Curry rolls three evades, so in this case, uh, the defender can't modify, and uh, the attacker can't modify my defense dice, and I don't want to. So we move on to compare results. I have rolled three evades. He's rolled two potential hits, and those cancel out. So the attack did not hit. Is this the first attack? It's not a secondary weapon uh, attack, so that doesn't uh, that doesn't come into play. Abilities that trigger or uh, that occur after attacking or after defending, Darth Vader does. 
So in this case, uh, Frank is going to go ahead and trigger Darth Vader, which deals me uh, a crit. One crit. One crit. But, you have a but I have a shield. So it removes the, the shield. And he takes two damage. Now, in this case, we're going to move on to nine. Abilities that trigger, trigger after attacking that do result in an attack. Because he missed, uh, he'll now trigger Gunner, which will allow him to attack again. So we are resolving a step, uh, an ability in step nine, so we move back to the beginning. He's going to uh, go to the declare target step. He's going to measure range. We're at range two. He's going to choose his weapon, which is his primary again. He's going to declare Guri as the target of the attack. There are no costs. Guri is now the defender. He has three attack dice with no ability to modify those, so he's going to roll three. And he rolls a hit, a crit, and an eyeball. I can go ahead and use Sensor Jammer again to switch that to an eyeball result. He's going to spend, at this point, uh, his target lock as the attacker. Um, what's that? Oh, but I he can't. can't re that's right. He can't reroll this one that I modified with Sensor Jammer. So he's going to reroll the one remaining non hit result, and he rolls a blank. So what he's left with now is a crit, an eyeball, uh, and a blank result. That moves us to the roll defense dice step. And that's three. I have no abilities that add to that, so I'll roll those three. And well, he's rolled uh, two evades and an eyeball, so um, the defender, the attacker can't modify my defense dice. I have no need to modify them, so we go right to compare. And those two evades cancel the lone critical hit result. So the attack did not hit. It's not a secondary weapon attack. We have no more abilities that trigger uh, after offending that don't result in an attack. Oh, we do. So, okay. Are you going to... We're going to Vader you again. going to Vader again. So at this point, I'm going to take a face-up damage card. And he's going to take two more damage uh, onto uh, his Decimator. Uh, he doesn't have another ability that allows him to uh, attack, uh, to perform a... Uh, an ability that triggers an attack. So down to the next question, we are not resolving an ability in step nine. So we move on to step 10. Uh, no ships were destroyed, so we have nothing to do in step 10. And that's the attack. Okay, so we're going to do something a little different, and uh, this might be the last one we do. Uh, what we're looking at now is a ship that has an ability to modify the defender's defense roll. So what we have is Merrick Steel with the, excuse me, with the X7 title, and he has Juke equipped. Merrick has just executed a, a three-speed maneuver, so he he brings a uh, is assigned a, an evade token, and then we're going to move on to his attack. Uh, he's going to be attacking Gurry, who has auto thrusters and sensor jammer. So first things first, uh, the declare target step, he's going to measure range and check arc. So he's got arc and he's got Guri at range 3. He's going to choose his weapon, his weapon is his primary. He's going to declare his target and it's Guri. Uh, there is no cost to this attack, Guri is now the defender uh, of this attack. So on to roll attack dice. How many dice do we have? We have three. The primary weapon gives you three dice. He has nothing that adds to that, so he's going to roll those three dice. And he rolls two hits. So can the defender modify any of my results? Yes, he can. So the defender is going to mod use sensor jammer to modify. Modify now any of those results. I can. I can use my focus token to turn that back to a hit. So now on to roll defense dice. Uh, have to identify the number on the card, which gives him three. However, in this case, at range three, he's going to get an extra, and due to the obstruction, he's going to get an extra. So that's going to total of five dice uh, that you're going to roll here. So he'll roll those now. All right, and he rolls two blanks, two evades, and an eyeball. In case, the attacker gets the opportunity to apply first. And so Juke uh, allows me to change one of those evade results to the ball. And now the defender uh, can modify those results. 
so auto thrusters will engage, changing that to an evade, and he'll spend his focus token, which he would really have to do, but why not, uh, just to show the sequence. So we now moving on to compare results with two potential hits, but four he rolled, uh, so they cancel out both those hits. So the question, did the attack hit? No, it did not. It's not a secondary. Um, there are no abilities that trigger now uh, after attack, no ability that triggers uh, that results in an attack, so not resolving any abilities from step 9, and no ships were destroyed, so that's the attack. So pretty simple, but a couple issues in sequence. Now, I think that we have proved that